This reality, this infinity is teeming with different expressions of life. And some of it's interacting with us. A professor of mathematics and astronomy at Queen's Mary University London, Bernard Carr, he said, our consciousness interacts with another dimension, actually many other dimensions. Our physical senses only show us a three-dimensional universe. What exists in the higher dimensions are entities we cannot touch with our physical senses. Exactly. So, the idea that we just operate in isolation of everything else is, for me, uh, crazy. This reality that we're experiencing has been hijacked by a force that some ancient people call archons, but there's different names right across the ancient world for the same force, the same entities. This is when the penny drops, when all these different names for the gods all over the world turn out to be different names for the same force because they're described in the same way. And um, all over the world you see this. Uh, in um, the Far East, Central America and other places, they're known as the serpent gods. The Zulus call them the Chittahuri, the children of the serpent. They're the Anunnaki in, uh, in Suma, Babylon, now Iraq. They're our snake brothers to the Hopi people of um, North America. They're the star people, many, many uh, examples of that. They are the demons of Christianity. To the Gnostics, they are archons. And to the Islamic and pre-Islamic world, they're called the Jinn. And in their prime form, they are energetic uh, in, in nature, but they can take form, as I will talk about. So, like I say, they're described so much in the same way, because they, they're different names for the same thing. So, the uh, Gnostic people, uh, not the Christian Gnostics, the pre-Christian Gnostics, that ran the Great Library at Alexandria, and they also manifested as the Cathars in southern France, they say that the Archons are made from luminous fire. The jinn, according to Islamic and pre-Islamic uh, belief, are made from smokeless fire. And you see this correlation of description um, wherever you go. Now this, for me, was one of the great finds ever in terms of understanding the nature of what is happening. At Nagamadi in um, Egypt, about 77 miles north of, of Luxor on the Nile, in 1945, a sealed jar was found with loads and loads of documents in it, leather bound. And they told um, the beliefs and the perceptions of this people called the Gnostics. And the Gnostics um, had a completely different um, view of reality than religion, which is why the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Church tried to destroy them wherever they got um, any strength and any foothold. They ran the great library at Alexandria, which had something like half a million scrolls uh, detailing the beliefs of the ancient world and the, the history of the ancient world, destroyed um, by the Roman church. And like I say, the Cathars, who were destroyed again by the Roman church in 1244, uh, I think it was, at, uh, at uh, uh, that uh, place in France Montsegur, that fort on the hill where I've been a couple of times. The religious establishment wanted these people destroyed because they were dangerous, because they had the truth they didn't want the people to know about. And um, this is what these scrolls um, and this find at Nagamani said. One fifth of the texts, and there were lots of them, were about a force called, they called the Archons, which they, they say created our physical universe. And they equated them with the Judeo-Christian Yahweh Jehovah God. And when you see the Old Testament, kill them and flog them and all that stuff, God, um, it fits precisely with the descriptions of the Archons by the Gnostics. So what they say in these, in these writings, in these texts, is 
that, well, first of all, archon means prince, ruler, authorities, or from the beginning. That's why they use the word archon. They said that um, the archons and the Lord Archon, which they called the Demiurge, was a fake god that created our physical or material reality as we perceive it. The Gnostics related the Demiurge, like I say, to the Judeo-Christian Yahweh Jehovah God, and they are inorganic, not resulting from or produced by growth. They are artificial. And um, they say in these texts that they created the inorganic parts of the solar system, but that the sun, the moon, and the earth were a system that were of itself and different from the rest, which was kind of interesting with what will come later. Um, they said that the uh, Demiurge Archons had no creative imagination and envy humans because we have. They're like cyborgs. Again, we're coming back to the inorganic. Like cyborgs, a robotic race that can imitate but not innovate. And the word they used was counter-mimicry. Now, what, it, what they were saying, in effect, is if you gave these Archons a blank sheet of paper, they could create nothing on it. They don't have that creative imagination, that what was called intentionality. But you give them something with um, a piece of paper with something on it, and they can twist it and manipulate it once it exists. Um, and they talked, uh, they used the term fantasia, because these entities, they said, just as the Islamic people say about the jinn, have the ability to create virtual reality illusions. They're mind parasites. They possess humanity and uh, manipulate the way they perceive everything. And they say the word you could use more than any about the Archons was deception. They are deceivers. And what they create is an inversion of the natural order, which will become so crystal clear as we go along. Why? Interesting, like we, we see these different names and actually for the same thing. The, the, the uh, classic Satan is called the deceiver and the demon of demons, as this demiurge is called the Archon of Archons, the Lord Archon. Now, as I've kind of studied this and, and put it together, it seems to me that what we're looking at is what I would call a self-aware distortion, and it's self-aware inversion. Everything is conscious. Even a distortion is conscious. Even an inversion is conscious, but it's conscious in a way that reflects the inversion and the distortion. Um, and if you look at what we call evil, it is live written backwards. Evil is simply an inversion of life, an inversion of perception, and evil is extreme ignorance, which is the inversion of truth and awareness. And because this force, this archontic force, shall I call it, is an inversion, an inversion of life, that's why it and anything attached to it is obsessed with death, which is an inversion of life. And so you get the Satanists who worship these gods in their rituals obsessed with death. That's why they're attracted to churchyards and cemeteries and stuff. And so the death cult, which is what this archontic force and its followers are, is about destroying. It's about killing. Um, and whereas the natural order is about life and abundance. And so when you look at the way the system, the archontic system that I'll come to, is destroying life. It's destroying life in war, but it's destroying life, the natural world. And it seems a contradiction, but it's not, because that's their world. The archon world, described by the Gnostics, is, is one of death one of no creative imagination. It's a death cult and all this pollution and environmental devastation is absolutely what it wants because that's its reality. And the other thing about the archontic mind is it's what we call psychopathic. They're psychopaths. The definition of which is this. No empathy. No remorse, no empathy. 
No ability to put themselves in the feelings of those that suffer the consequences of their actions. Once you have no empathy, you have no limit to what you will do because you have no emotional consequence for doing it. No remorse for what you do, no shame. Parasites overwhelmingly, why? Because they have no creativity of their own, so they have to parasite off the creativity of the target population. That's what the system does. Look at banking, what else is that? But an exercise in parasites. And these people, which manifest as many world leaders and all the rest of it I'll come to, are pathological liars. Which is, what is a pathological liar? An inversion of truth, inversion. And they'll do whatever it takes to get their end uh, uh, goal. Other thing, the Gnostics used in these texts the word hal, meaning simulation. They talked about the fact that these archons could create what we would call virtual realities through controlling perception. They said um, the, about the Archons, they make something appear to happen that does not happen. They can induce a virtual reality experience in the, in the translation. And what do the Islam and pre-Islamic pre world say about the jinn? They can manipulate humans by creating illusions. This will become big time relevant the longer we go into this two hours. So we're back to this, that um, what our reality does uh, or is, it's possibilities and probabilities folded into existence by perception. So this whole archontic system is about programming our perception, programming a, a distortion of our perception, an inversion of our perception, which is why we live in a madhouse, because it's an inversion of the natural order. Um, so the idea is to disconnect the human uh, mind the human droplet from the ocean and lock us into this tiny set of frequencies which then we perceive as all that there is to see and gotcha. Now before this what I call hack and you see why I say hack shortly, um, there was another world described by the ancients and very much along the lines of the Avatar movie and the Navi, the blue people and how they interacted with the natural world, how they communicated with animals, how they communicated with each other um, beyond speech. And what the um, uh, Gnostic texts say is that the Archons made a bad copy, as they describe it, of our original reality. The original reality was that kind of avatar world. And when you say that without the first two hours, it would sound ludicrous and ridiculous and that's impossible. But we're not dealing with the physical. We're dealing with information. That world is an information construct which we decode into a lovely world. This is an information construct which we decode into the world that we have today. And the idea, this might, might need a battery mate, uh, the idea is to, uh, uh, was to create this illusory reality and um, replace the old reality and then, um, this uh, needs a battery I think, because it's going on me. Anyway, and then tuning humans into that bad copy. Now when you think about it, we, we we tuned into an information field of certain frequencies, we uh, decode that into a reality. If we are then moved, our dial is moved so we're decoding something else, we just decode another completely different reality. And that's what is meant by this bad copy. So this is a, 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 an image that sums it up. I'm walking outside in the sun. You don't have to be in the sun, you just have to decode the fact you're in the freaking sun. And it's the same with this bad copy. You just decode a reality and you think it's real because it's the only one that you can perceive. So you can decode a reality of the avatar kind and then you are fed a different information source, tuned into it, ways that I'll come to, and then you decode a different reality, what I call the archontic reality. And this, I would strongly suggest, is the fake reality that we have been decoding through what we call known human history, 
modern human history and further that we think is just a natural world it ain't if you can create a a virtual reality simulation then you can create an alternative to it as well which is what the bad copy is and you're tuned to it through something called entrainment entrainment is the uh, process by which if you have three violins and it's they're all plucked to the same note therefore they are the dominant frequency put another violin in there either plucked to another note or, or not plucked to any note and it will start vibrating in sympathy with them because they're the dominant frequency and if you can create a dominant frequency then you can start to entrain the human a decoding system into that frequency and suddenly you're decoding a completely different reality and once that happens they got you if you don't realize that's what's happened because to you well, this is this is how it is mate this is the world isn't it well what world is it that's my question